Hey guys, and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. I know a lot of you guys out there love your Corsair stuff, whether it's your keyboards and mice, or your power supplies and memory, but today we've got something a little bit different from the company. This is the Corsair One, their new small form factor gaming PC. And to be honest, this is probably the best small form factor gaming PC that I've reviewed so far. It's a truly excellent product and you'll get to see just how good Corsair's engineering is when we open up this bad boy in just a little bit. Anyway, we'll start off by talking about as always, the hardware inside the Corsair One. Uh, there's a number of configuration options available. The base model comes with an Intel Core i7-7700 processor with a GTX 1070 GPU inside, but my review unit here, 7700K, so they've given you the overclocking ability in this particular model, and also GTX 1080 graphics in a chassis that's just this large. And for those that want to spend a bit more money and you can afford to splurge out a bit, there is a GTX 1080 Ti model of the Corsair One available through Corsair's website. So Corsair is definitely not holding back when it comes to the hardware inside this system. You also find 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory in all Corsair One units, an MSI Z270 Mini ITX motherboard, an 80 plus gold certified SFX power supply, and SSD options from Corsair ranging from from 240 up to 960 gigabytes. My review unit here comes with the Corsair Force LE 960 gig drive, so top of the line in my particular review unit that'll only give the best a hardware unbox to check out, of course. The Corsair One looks fantastic on the outside. This is one of the few small form factor gaming PCs I've seen that truly looks excellent, whether it's sitting on your desk or in your home theater setup. This is mostly down to the beautiful aluminum panels that they've used all around this device. It's bead blasted with a matte black finish. It looks fantastic. It gives off a premium look to this device. And I really like those sort of fins that you get along the top. Uh, there's a top 140 mil fan that sort of exhausts most of the air out out of the top here and those fins just make it seem like this device is powerful and requires a lot of cooling when that's not necessarily the case. Both the left and right sides are perforated here for the intake to the CPU and GPU coolers and along the front you will see those beautiful channels where the blue LED light strip emanates through. Corsair says they didn't give this an RGB LED strip because they wanted to give off the proper aesthetic for their small form factor PC. The aqua blue color here makes it seem cool and quiet and that is certainly the case when you power on this device for the first time. Corsair says this is a VR ready system which is why you will find HDMI 2.0 and USB 3.0 type A on the front of this device and if you swing it around to the back well you get all the IO from that MSI motherboard so you'll get a further three USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, two USB 2.0 ports for your keyboard and mouse, USB 3.1 Gen 2 type C, gigabit Ethernet, five 3.5 mil audio jacks for your surround sound analog audio plus optical SP diff, and we get two antenna connectors for the 802.11 AC Wi-Fi solution. And of course, triple display setups are possible thanks to two DisplayPort 1.4 connectors and an HDMI 2.0 port, which are all connected internally to the graphics card. Speaking of the internals, it's really worth opening up the Corsair One to take a look at just how awesome this device is engineered. In the Corsair One Pro models, which come with the GTX 1080 or higher, both the CPU and GPU are liquid cooled with closed loop solutions here. On the CPU side, there's no additional fan only the 140 millimeter fan on the top of the unit is drawing air through the system to cool that radiator on the side panel. And on the GPU side, if you get that GTX 1080 model that's liquid cooled as well with an additional blower fan that assists with the cooling solution here. If you opt for the entry level model with the GTX 1070, it is just air cooled, but it's great to see that on the higher end models, especially those who buy one with a GTX 1080 Ti in it, that you get the added cooling benefit of the 240 millimeter slimline radiator here. Perhaps the best aspect of the Corsair One is its user upgrade ability. Everything in this system is an off-the-shelf component, from the motherboard, CPU, and RAM, to the SFX power supply, the SSD, and even the graphics card. Corsair tells me there's enough room for an 11-inch triple-slot graphics card inside the One. If you do opt to still use that 240mm uh, close-up liquid cooler after you upgrade, you'll be reduced to just two slots here. But the fact that the graphics card is even upgradable in this system is far better than a lot of other small form factor gaming PCs that use either soldered on GPUs or you know your more laptop style GPUs inside. In this system, 
everything is user upgradable. Let's just say in the future, you know, Intel releases a new CPU platform, you need to upgrade the motherboard, you can simply swap out the mini ITX board in here for an entirely new platform, the IO shield pops out on the back, everything is good to go. And that's one of the great things about the Corsair One, because let's be honest, you're gonna to have to spend a bit more than usual to get the One chassis. You know, there's always that pre-built premium on the price point, but the fact that in the future, you can reuse this chassis, upgrade anything inside the device, really reduces the impact of that extra premium that you'll have to pay. As we're looking at off-the-shelf components in my review unit, again, GTX 1080 graphics and a Core i7 7700K, the Corsair One performs exactly as you would expect for those components in a gaming system. Check out all of our previous coverage on the GTX 1080, the Core i7 7700K and all of that because, well, the Corsair One performs exactly as you will see across all the benchmarks that we've done on hardware unboxed in the past. It's a great gaming system with the GTX 1080 in it for 1440p and even 4K gaming, depending on the quality settings. I was mostly gaming on my pleb quality 1080p TV. Haven't quite upgraded to 4K yet, but gaming at 1080p on a GTX 1080 is fantastic. You know, you're pushing above 60 FPS in pretty much every situation. And that's exactly what you want to see from the Corsair One. More impressive than the performance though is the cooling solution. This guy runs remarkably quiet for the size of the unit. At idle, the system is very, very quiet. Um, if you place it next to your monitor, you will be able to hear a bit of rumble, a bit of hum from those uh, closed loop liquid coolers and the fan on the top. But if you put this, you know, a meter or two away, it's pretty much silent during regular operation. After firing up a game, it takes almost 15 minutes for the closed loop liquid coolers to heat up. And even then, the system isn't that loud during load. Again, if it's on your desk, you'll be able to hear it. But if you're playing some in-game audio on speakers, you'll pretty easily wash out the sounds from this device and you know put it on the floor or a little bit away. And again, the Corsair One is pretty silent in that regard. As for cooling performance, thanks to those liquid coolers in the Corsair One, this system runs pretty darn cool for such a small and compact system. During a lengthy session of Watch Dogs 2, the CPU is hovering around the 68 to 72 degrees Celsius mark, and that's impressive considering there's no fan directly attached to the radiator in here, but even more impressive, the GPU sitting at 54 degrees Celsius no matter what I did, that's a very solid result and gives you plenty of room for overclocking, which we'll touch on in just a moment. If you do fire up Ida 64, system stability test, I managed to push the CPU up to around the 83 degrees Celsius mark, which reduces a little bit the overclocking headroom on the 7700K. But nevertheless, you know, that's a pretty decent result considering those closed loop liquid coolers and only the single 140 millimeter fan on the top of the unit. As for overclocking, on the CPU side, I was able to push up the CPU to 4.9 gigahertz pretty easily, but the CPU did run pretty hot at just over 90 degrees Celsius. I didn't really want to run it over 90 degrees C, so I pulled the CPU clock speed down to more like 4.8 gigahertz on the 7700K, and then the CPU was sitting more at sort of your 86 to 87 degrees Celsius. I think that's a pretty good result considering the cooling solution inside. As for the GPU, you can do pretty much whatever you like because there's so much thermal headroom in this system. I pushed plus 190 megahertz on the GTX 1080's uh, core clock and around plus 170 on the memory. The GPU is then running constantly at over 2000 and megahertz no matter you know what sort of situation we're throwing at it and that only added one degree celsius to the temperature of the gpu so plenty of overclocking headroom in this guy you can basically push it up to the limits of the gtx 1080 and getting an extra 10 to 11 percent more performance out of it is no slouch and it's you know without making the system any louder or hotter or anything like that you know that's a really solid result for this very flexible and well suited to gaming uh, small form factor system so the Corsair One looks amazing on the outside. It's really well engineered on the inside with a fantastic cooling solution, great performance, and everything is user upgradable. So the thing that you're probably asking yourselves now is how much does it cost to get my hands on my own Corsair One unit? Well, if you're after the entry level model with its GTX 1070 GPU and Core i7 7700 CPU, it'll set you back around 1,800 US dollars, or if you're in Australia like me, around 2,600 dollar e dues. I did quickly whip up a system on Newegg just to see what it would cost to build you know, your own system with similar hardware, and it came to around 1400 US dollars, so a $400 price premium for the Corsair One. Again, it'll be a bit steep to pay for those that are more keen on building their own system, but you have to understand there's a lot of people out there who can't be bothered with that. They just want a nice looking pre-built system, and the Corsair One you know, is user upgradable. You get that fantastic engineering and cooling solution on the inside. For some people, you know, 
it could be worth paying that price premium to get the Corsair One unit at this price point. There's a similar price premium on the review unit that I received to review. So this particular model here costs $2,300 with the GTX 1080 and one terabyte ish hard drive on the inside or just over $3,000 uh, dollars. I think it's $3,150 in Australia for this model. Uh, again, $400 price premium over an equivalent model with the same hardware. So again, you know, not too bad for considering the hardware and the excellent chassis that you're getting here. I really love the Corsair one. It's one of my favorite small form factor gaming PCs. And for one of Corsair's first attempts at making a system like this, it's a really solid offering. Anyway, that's it for this review of the Corsair One. There's links to buy the system in the description below if you're interested. Don't forget to check out the written review on techspot.com and we will catch you in the next one.